What's up, YouTube? It's Biblical Truther. I told you guys the other night when I made that video about the uh, millennial age possibly being passed. I'm not saying I'm 100% correct, and I know I lose some views, viewers, uh, subscribers behind that, but hopefully what I've found today uh, will cement that fact. Uh, also, um, a incredible find, and I have not seen anyone anywhere talk about this so um not saying i'm correct you can use your own opinion on that because i'm gonna show you some things that are undeniable uh about the united states so let's get to it so this is california as we know it today we got the the valley right through here um it's where a lot of the vineyards are a lot of the silicon valleys are right up in here where san francisco is um but let me show you an ancient map. Uh, I think this is from the 1700s where it shows California is an island. And a lot of people in the mud flood community um, has referenced this uh, in several maps like this. But I want to point something out because I heard something today on unexpected cosmology. And I have his playlist on the millennial age plus mud flood in my playlist. Uh, so you can go straight to his channel and watch those They're pretty long videos. But I will not share anybody's videos that don't have supporting evidence. And he's by far has the most supporting evidence that I've found thus far. Um, but I have mentioned in the past that I thought that uh, the Mississippi River was actually the Nile. And um, that down towards the Gulf of Mexico, uh, there, you know, could be the uh, original Garden of Eden. And um, hang on just a second. Let me look something else up right quick. Um, this came out March 4th. Uh, let's see. Ancient city. Coast of New Orleans. See, here it is right here. So this came out on March 4th, and I've been holding a lot of this info back for a long time because I just hadn't had the supporting evidence uh, up until my wife showed me this a few days ago, or about a week and a half ago, actually. <clears throat> but off the coast of St. Bernard, which is about 50 miles east of uh, New Orleans, this guy claims that he had found uh, a 12,000-year-old city. And um, he said he discovered the ruins of an ancient civilization off the coast of St. Bernard Parish. He claims there is a huge underwater granite mounds near the Chandelier Islands that may have been uh, the site of a lost city. The Chandelier Islands are a chain of uninhabited barrier islands located in the Gulf of Mexico, 50 miles east of North uh, New Orleans. And uh, it's actually just off the coast of Mississippi. Um, <clears throat> but he said before a dramatic sea level rise at the end of the ice age, which is not the case. But anyway, he said he's a retired architect, um, retired architect, and he believes the site uh, to be uh, predating the Maya, Inca, and Aztec civilizations in Mexico. Uh, what's down there are hundreds of buildings that are covered with sand and silt that are geographically related to the Great Pyramid of Giza uh, and he continues on and said he's seen uh, under like 200 foot of silt uh, you know just watery dirt that there is actually three pyramids in the same configuration as the pyramids of Giza along with many many um, buildings of these megalithic granite you know blocks um, making these um, sit making up this city so like i said when i started this is california as we know it today um let's see but right here is when it was an island and as you can see right here it's called the gulf of california or the red sea uh and today on uh the unexpected cosmology he was talking about how a woman had sent him a letter saying that she believed that this island was actually egypt and that the Red Sea right here is what God parted when he had the exodus and when Moses led the Israelites out of Egypt. 
Um, so I got to wondering, you know, there's there's quite a few things over here in California. Um, let's see. Not that one. Uh, we have the there's a few churches called Golgotha over here, but I don't think this is exactly where Golgotha is located. But there is a Mount Hermon right here, you know, where the fallen angels touched down when they came down and decided to take women uh, for wives. And then this is a picture of Mount Graham where the uh, Vatican and the Germans decided to put a telescope, a big infrared telescope. Uh, that the Vatican owns called the Lucifer Telescope. thought that was mighty interesting, but there's some other places throughout this whole region that has um, not the same names as in the Bible, but very close. Uh, there's uh, Naf Nafi, almost like Naphtali. Uh, there's, you know, there, there's several of them. You can, you know, go check that out, but for sake of time, I'm not going to get into all that right now. But I've been kind of holding on to this info because, like I said, I didn't have enough to present it just yet. So I'm um, taking a shower earlier and I'm, you know, just talking to the Lord and I can hear my spirit remember the Alamo. And I was like, remember the Alamo. So this is the Alamo. And I'm thinking this cannot be remnants of the temple, uh, Solomon's temple. So I start going through all these pictures um, and I'm not saying this is, but that's one of the pictures right there, the front of the Alamo. And I actually visited this place when I was like 15. Um, but they are, I mean, you know, according to the depictions that we've been given through the mainstream, um, it could be, you know, could be, but that's not the best part. You know, I'm, I'm gonna get to that in just a second, but, uh, let me see if I can find that other picture right here. So this is what's left of the Alamo. And it looks an awful lot like, uh, I think it was, uh, let me get back to it. Well, this is a picture of Jerusalem. I think this is Wikipedia. Uh, picture of Jerusalem, and I'm going to get to Jerusalem in just a minute, but as you can see, there's the temple in the middle. Uh, but I was looking over these pictures and then comparing them to the Alamo, and um, I don't know, man. I can see somewhat of a resemblance, but what I'm going to show you here in a few minutes is going to really blow your mind. Because uh, the way this thing is set up and how they've shown us over the years that it's made, you know, with these walls on the outside. Um, there was a picture that I can't seem to find right now. Oh, there it is. There's one of them of what uh, it used to look like. But there was another one uh, that showed the outer wall. And I can't seem to find it now. Huh. Been having trouble doing this video. I don't know why. Maybe it's because I uncovered something that wasn't supposed to be uncovered. But. Uh, it's somewhere right here in the beginning. I can't believe it's not here now. But anyway. Um, that's the little monument for what's left of the Alamo. Really looks familiar. Oh, here it is. These are the outside walls around uh, the Alamo, which I find uh, peculiar, especially when this is what they tell us it looked like back in the day. But that's not what I really wanted to get to. But it is curious that this thing looks a lot like the temple. Um, but this, this is an ancient map from Texas history of Jerusalem, Texas. And you see how this thing is laid out. <laughs> it looks a lot like uh, that city of Jerusalem. This is actually a, another picture of you know, Jerusalem. And you can see how this thing's shaped. It's got the walled city all the way around it, the temple complex right here in the middle. Um, 
but this Jerusalem, Texas one. You can see there's a temple complex right here. Walls all the way around. Um, but what's really curious to me is uh, this one is of Jerusalem. Right down here in the bottom, it says Mount Calvary. And you see it's got the depiction of the three crosses. Uh, but let me go back to this one because this is the one from Texas history. And you see right down here in this bottom corner, it's got the three crosses as well. And this is in Texas. It's Bethphage, Beth, Bethania. Uh, most of this is in Latin. And um, let me see where I had the one where you can zoom in. So this is that picture from Texas history. As you can see up here, the portal to Texas history. But I want to zoom in because all of this is in Latin. And look at this right here. Sepulcher Davidus. Is that David's sepulcher right here in Jerusalem, Texas? Um, I, I did some, uh, let me see. This is a translation from Latin. And it does mean monument. And David is, really needs no um, explaining that is, you know, or I'm sorry, that's not the right one. Sepulcher. And David is, is you know, David the prophet, David is. And there's other ways to say his name. Um, but sepulcher, apparently, is exactly what it looks like in Latin. Uh, Holy sepulcher. <laughs> David sepulcher. That's, that's just wild to me. Um, so let's go back here for a minute. Uh, I didn't translate a lot of these. And I will link this in the description so you guys could check it out as well. But down here... Calvaria locusts, and that translation. Um, look, this is this is Latin right here. This this right here is Latin, and here it is in English. They came to a place called Golgotha, that is to say, the place of the skull. So Calvaria locusts means the place of the skull. <sighs> This is unbelievable, unbelievable. And then I took this right here, Ananai, which is a lot like Adonai, which is what the Jewish people call God, uh, Ananai Monumentum. And uh, this is, you know, Monumentum is obviously a monument. And Ananai is just Ananai in English. It doesn't give you a translation. But, um, yeah, man, this is Jerusalem, Texas. And you wonder why there's so much controversy around Texas. Well, apparently they have been hiding quite a bit from us. Uh, Helena, Regia, I don't even know what that means. Um, there's Herodias Temple. Uh, <laughs> I mean, this is this is crazy. This is right here in America, and you want to know why. Um why they're after America, why Gog and Magog surrounds the camp of Yah or Yahweh or to most Christians, just God. But uh, I'll use his name for the sake of argument. Uh, when they surround the camp of Yah, um, he's going to defend them, correct? Now, there's some prophecies, and I bring up the Hopi prophecies a lot. because They prophesied that there will be a mass exodus to the four corners. And um, I don't think I have the four corners pulled up, uh, but I will show you where that's at. Uh, this right here, this region where New Mexico, Arizona, Utah, and Colorado meet, that is the four corners. And the Hopi, their reservation is, uh, I believe, right here. So they're right close to the four corners. So that's interesting, too, that there will be a second exodus. And um, I haven't told anybody but my wife and my son the other day. But about three and a half years ago, um, I was praying while I was outside cleaning one of my water slides. And 
um, you know, basically asking the Lord what I would be doing in this upcoming catastrophe, you know, this, this war that's impending. And I got the word modern day Moses. And what Moses do, he led an exodus out of Egypt. And I've told you guys in the past about my wife having a dream that just scores of people just started showing up at our house. And we had them, you know, I got four acres of land and my whole property was covered in tents of people and families that had just showed up at our house. So, um, like the Bible says, there's nothing new under the sun. So I do believe that there will be a second exodus. Um, however, back to the California thing. Um, I did want to show you uh, this is prophecy and there. They are saying it's being fulfilled right now and over in the fake Israel that they uh, have made over there. And funny enough, back in the early 1800s, and I bring up the mud flood a good bit, too. Uh, Cause all the things that happened after that, but um, they say that prophecy is being fulfilled over there right now with the Dead Sea um, drying up. And as you can see at the top of this article, uh, where did it go? I wish I knew how to highlight this stuff. But anyway, uh, the Red Sea and the Dead Sea are synonymous. They're, they're one and the same, but, um, and I don't even see it on here now. I read it earlier, but anyway, it talks about it drying up in a fresh water, uh, running through and scores of animals, uh, you know, and Ezekiel and Zechariah, uh, yeah, not that one. Nope. There it go. There it is. So if this valley was the Red Sea at one time. You can you can clearly see it's dried up. Now, as far as the river flowing into here, I don't know. I'm not from California, so any of you guys that live over there can uh, verify if there's any rivers that run through there. But I do know this. Uh, when it comes to Egypt and uh, all the stories of the Bible, they were always talking about vineyards. And what is California known for, but it's vineyards and wine production. Um, it's one of the main places, I think, in the United States, if not the only place that are just loaded with these vineyards. And a lot of them are in the valleys, right here in this valley where the Red Sea is dried up now. I thought that was pretty interesting as well. But anyway, <laughs> this is just mind-blowing because this map, this is on Texas, Texas history website, and it is of Jerusalem, Texas. And it, it definitely depicts, where is it? Where did one go that I can zoom in? And I can't speak Latin, but Gishon, that's familiar from, you know, reading the Bible. I remember that word. It's spelled a little different, but um, what do you think, man? Did I just stumble on the real Jerusalem? Is that why all these people are having dreams of America being surrounded by China and Russia and uh, the bombs dropping and all that sort of thing? Are they after God's people? Because I was trying to put a video together about the lost 10 tribes. And, you know, God, there's prophecies in the Old Testament that God would bring back all the tribes of Israel. Well, um, I don't think I had that one pulled up, but uh, give me just a second. I'm going to run and grab my phone real quick. I don't even know if I can pause this. Uh, no, anyway, give me just a second. I'm gonna grab it.
So I am going to take exit this for now. And I'm going to look this up real quick because I think it's kind of important as to the Millennial Kingdom past situation that nobody wants to hear because best believe when I first heard it, I did not want to hear it either. Um, that will mean that Satan's on his second, uh, second release, and he's probably more angry at us than he was the first time. Um, let's see. Forge slash. The Scattered Hebrews. Scattered Hebrews House. So, the guy's name is Black Simba, and it's the scattered Hebrew house of Israel. He goes through and shows where each tribe ended up. So, we have Simeon and the Dominicans, Zebulun and the Guatemalan and Panamanians, Ephraim, Puerto Rico, Manhattan, Cuba, uh, Gad is the North American Indians, Reuben. Seminole Indians, Harbor Australians, uh, or the Aborigines, as they call them, Naphtali, Hawaiian, Pacific Islanders, Asher, South and Central America, Issachar, is the Mexicans. And he goes through and talks about how he came to all that uh, conclusion. And um, this is from uh, the book of Second Ezra. And as for your seeing him gather to himself another multitude that is peaceable, these are the ten tribes which were led away from their own land of captivity in the day of King Hoshiah, whom Shalmaneser, the king of Syrians, had captive. He took them across the river, and they were taken into another land, but they formed this plan for themselves that they would leave the multitude of the nations and go to a more distant region where mankind had never lived, that they at least they might keep their statues, which they had not kept in their own land. And they went in by the narrow passages of the Euphrates River. For at that time, the Most High performed signs for them and stopped the channels of the river until they had passed over. Through that region, there was a long way to go, a journey of a year and a half, and that country is called Arzareth. Then they dwelt there until the last times, talking about our times, the last times, the end days, the last days. And now when they are about to come again, the Most High will stop the channels of the rivers again so that they may be able to pass over. Therefore, you saw the multitude gathered together in peace. This is, I think, describing that second exodus. You got to go outside, dude. Hang on a second. Sorry, my dog had to go outside. So that was from Second Ezra. Um, and then he's talking about where Azeroth is. And this is according to official history narrative uh, about where these places were and, and where you know Noah landed and where his sons dispersed to, which I, I don't so much believe anymore. Um, but anyway, it goes on to talk about how there were some European explorers that came to the United States. Uh, and encountered these indigenous people, and no matter what language they used, they could not speak to them. And there was like three guys on the ship that were um, Jewish, so they started speaking to each other in Hebrew. And the Indians 
um, they knew Hebrew. So they started chatting with them and talking with them. And uh, yeah, so that's how we find out that the American Indians, um, you know, aside from the uh, Sanskrit Hebrew writings on all the cave walls and such, uh, that's how we found out that they are actually um, Hebrews, you know, part of the 10 tribes. Um, and it just goes on talking about how they figured out that they were uh, of the, t you know, the tribes of Israel in America. Uh, and I'll link this one in the description too. And, um, you know, I guess the other places that they went, they realized that all these um, native Indians from all these different places, Dominican Republic, uh, Mexico, Peru, Panama, New Spain, uh, all these places, these people spoke Hebrew. So um, I think after the thousand year reign, there were still some people that were uh, dispersed throughout the land, which um, makes you wonder about the orphan trains. You know, if we are the descendants of these Hebrews, because most Americans today have ancestry through the Native Americans, because uh, that was the biggest genocide in, in all of world history, uh, makes you wonder why these European uh, people came over here and just slaughtered them like they did. Uh, that's why I have nothing to do with uh, Thanksgiving because that's just celebrating that that era in time. But um, it talks about how their customs, they held the same customs as the Jewish people does, uh, rituals, rites, feast days, new moon, Sabbaths, the whole nine, given the, you know, their first uh, first fruits and such um, but yeah it's definitely interesting and this right here I wanted to show you too uh, in addition the Lord will raise up a king over Israel who will destroy the family of Jeroboam this will happen today even now then the Lord will shake Israel like a reed whipped about in a stream he will uproot the people of Israel from this good land that he gave their ancestors and will scatter them beyond the Euphrates for they have angered the Lord with their Asherah poles they have set up for worship. He will abandon Israel be because Jeroboam sinned and made Israel sin along with them. And one thing that we know about the Native Americans is that they have these things called totem poles. And they tend to do rituals around these poles. And they're not just, you know, uh, totem poles with wings. I mean, there's a plethora of di different ones. But what's what's shocking is that. Um, there are many civilizations on almost every continent that uh, have these festivals that involve these Asherah poles. So that's uh, something to think about, too, about after the thousand year reign, um, that these children were shipped all over the world. And a lot of the customs for the older children, at least, uh, carried with them. So I thought that was uh, that was pretty pretty crazy man but what do you guys think about jerusalem texas because this map seems to mirror um that other map and it is it's just blowing my mind the things that are on here and i haven't looked up every one of these like fine serpentinous uh Piscina Serpentinum, don't know what that means. And here's a Herodias monument, or monument to Herodias. Uh, portal for Ephraim, I mean, all the gates are here um, for, for the tribes, you know what I'm saying? But it's written in Latin. It's just crazy, man, because when New Jerusalem comes down, it says that they're going to have gates on, on all, you know, three on each side uh, for all 12 tribes. So uh, I plan on going through and seeing if I can get a translation of all these gates and entrances and uh, see how that lines up to what the temple should have been. But this right here looks like the wall then the inner court and what would have been... Uh, uh, Solomon's temple, but as you can see, there's no temple in the middle where the Holy of Holies would have been located in. 
But what do you guys think, man? Leave me a comment. I haven't heard anyone talk about this. So give me your thoughts. Man. I'd love to hear what you think. Uh, but as you can see, it's definitely from the Texas History website. But, man, that thing looks a lot like this. Looks a lot like this. Even got the three crosses down here from Mount Calvary. I mean, almost everything on this map is on this map. And it gives you a whole bunch of stuff down here. Uh, basically telling you what each little thing that's, you know, uh, like this is RR. Of course, I already translated that for you. Uh, um, Castra Pompeii or, uh, yeah, this, this is not that old. This is not that old, but it's shocking nonetheless. Um, and the only thing I didn't do is see in relation to the Alamo where Jerusalem is actually located. As a matter of fact, let's just, just I just got to, got to check it out. I just check it out. Um, Let's see. Jerusalem, Texas. As we know, oh, of course, it's not going to show us where Jerusalem is in Texas, uh, but yet it's 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 in Texas. <laughs> But this, this is where, right here, um, this is where the Alamo is located. So I don't know exactly where Palestine was. Like I said, I can't really find it. It's crazy. They have rewrote history and fed us lie after lie after lie to the point of calling... Uh, the Middle East, the promised land, when obviously there's, you know, there's your proof right there that America was actually the promised land. And also, too, uh, another thing I found the other day while looking through all this, um, did you know there's an Assyria in Michigan? called Assyria Township oh, Assyria Township, Michigan. It's a real place right here. Bam. Right there. Assyria Township, Michigan. Ain't that something? Then you have uh, down here, oh, where is that? Little Egypt, somewhere right up in this area around Memphis, because I told you guys that Memphis is also, you know, over there in the Middle East. Uh, so we're in backwards world, you know what I'm saying? The great deception of, of Hasatan, our, our, um, our uh, adversary. He has told us we live in the West when we're actually in the East or whatever it may be. Who knows? There's so many lies in this world. Uh, you know, North could be South. South could be North, uh, which I believe South is North for the simple fact of what Admiral Byrd was talking about, uh, how there was more land down there past the Antarctic. Oh, Go to Jay Dreamer's channel and check out his video, The Smoky God. He reads a book called The Smoky God of this guy who said it's a first-hand account of actually going to Eden. Um, you may not believe that, but the story is very convincing, very convincing. So you got Little Egypt right up in here. Uh, I believe New Orleans possibly could have been Rome originally because it's a heavy, heavily Catholic place. Uh, many cathedrals, um, you know, the voodoo capital of the U.S. and such. And then right, 
this is the Chandelier Islands right here. So that city that they found or is now reporting on but trying to debunk because the experts don't agree is uh, right up in here, right where the Mississippi flows out. Hmm. Wasn't Egypt located at the mouth of, uh, uh, was it the Nile or the Euphrates? I forget. But that would put it right there, right at the mouth of the river. But anyway, leave your thoughts in the comments, and I would love to hear you, your thoughts on this, because uh, I do believe that North America was the original promised land, and all the biblical stories unfolded right here right here not excluding canada i don't exclude canada because there's some historic sites up there as well so um, just look over there in israel man you think you can wander around israel for 40 years in the wilderness or would it take a cotton the size of the united states with the water level far less uh, for you to just wander in the desert for 40 years in the wilderness you know what i'm saying just kind of drifting around just saying, there's been more giants found in America than anywhere else in the world, as far as I know. Um, newspapers for, for days about giants found here. So, just saying, man. Let me know what you think. Love you guys.